my body Every size, every line, every girl, every guy, everybody who don't identify Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here Hi, hello, my name is Loey and it feels so good to be back here on my living room floor saying that to you. It is like nine o'clock at night. I am drinking a cold brew out of my massive Disneyland Starbucks cup. I am really sick right now in case you can't tell from my voice. Mercury retrograde, which by the way, I never really know if I believe in like a lot of astrology stuff. I think it's interesting and can be very coincidental, but like what I'm getting to is that this Mercury retrograde is hitting my butt so hard. I woke up at like 8 in the morning and my only real plan for today was to film this video. And for some reason, all of these things keep standing in my way. My computer's charger, which I've had for years, for some reason just went out earlier today. My washing machine stopped working today. My dishwasher stopped working today. And then earlier, as I was finally gearing up to film this, um, sitting down down here like warming up my lights everything like that I kept seeing things moving out of the corner of my eye as well as hearing footsteps coming from my bedroom and then literally two minutes ago my front door unlocked except nobody was unlocking it um, you can hear when there's like a key in it or something and I immediately ran to the door to go see what was up and no one was there and my door just unlocked by itself and I feel great Thanks for asking. What kind of video would this be for me if there was not an off-tangent intro, but seriously, happy Halloween. Um, I am so excited to be back here with you guys on this day. I know that I have been obviously MIA recently. I have been all over the country to various paranormal locations, and you guys can expect those series coming up very soon. I filmed at the Queen Mary at the very beginning of the month. I filmed at the Stanley Hotel. I was there with Warner Brothers and that I actually traveled out to Salem, Massachusetts with Freeform. So I have a ton of paranormal creepy content coming up for you, but because I really haven't sat down at all recently, haven't been around Wi-Fi so I could send videos to my editor and yada yada yada, I just haven't been able to put out videos and I'm very sorry because I have missed you guys so, so much. For this Halloween special, I kept thinking about how we could celebrate today and kind of have a little Halloween party of our own. Um, and in the past, I've done kind of all encompassing like Halloween parties on my channel where I show you guys Halloween costumes and tell you scary stories and we play scary games and all of that and I wish I could do that again this year but alas Halloween just crept up on me and so instead we are going to be talking about one of my other favorite things right now which is actually TikTok. Now I've had a bit of a series running here on my channel for the scary side of TikTok and since you guys have enjoyed it so very much I thought what better way to celebrate Halloween if I don't have all the time to plan a proper party than to just sit here and talk about five of my favorite TikTok hauntings. But before we get into that, I know this intro is already way long enough. This is, of course, my first video that I have posted since my BuzzFeed Unsolved video. I just wanted to say a huge thank you to those of you who have been here since way before the BuzzFeed Unsolved video and those of you who maybe found me right after it. Um, thank you so much for your support. That was hands down one of the most exciting things I've ever gotten to do ever um and you know i come from kind of a background before i did paranormal stuff of you know talking about plus size fashion and beauty and i've done tons of cool shoots and gone to cool locations and nothing really tops getting to hang out with two people that you have watched and admired for years and years and years in a setting that is just like your place your very haunted place it's crazy that I feel like I can call Ryan and Shane friends of mine now. Maybe they wouldn't call me their friend, but I definitely think of them as friends. We um, saw each other actually very recently after filming the show because we filmed it all the way back in August. And it was just so cool to see them and to get to tell them how devoted and excited their fan base was and how much it meant to me to be part of something like that. Um, and they're such cool people and that was such a cool experience. And yeah, just wanted to remind you guys how very thankful I am. Yeah, without any further ado, let's get into five TikTok 
Sherlock hauntings. Bet you forgot that's what you were here for, didn't you? In all seriousness, these stories and these hauntings range between hauntings that encompass an entire account, right? That's all they post or it's most of what they post all the way to a quick little standalone video or two. I tried not to do anything where it was just one video. I think I have one case in here that was kind of like that. But also the difference between these and other kind of TikTok accounts, a lot of you kept telling me to cover um, where is everyone. It is just a TikTok account that um, seems like a bit of an ARG, kind of a spinoff of like The Sun Vanished or Hi, I Mary Mary. The difference here is that these are are claimed at least to be true hauntings. These are not alternate reality games. This is not um, storytelling. By the way, if you just heard that noise, some of those noises are my cats. They are currently in my guest room right now because they're maniacs and they will crawl all over me. Anyways, yeah, these are all claimed to be true, real hauntings. Whether they are, or they are hoaxes, or they are quick one-off um, attempts at storytelling, I think that's really up to you as a viewer to decide. What I am here to do is just to tell you these stories in their entirety for you to enjoy. So please sit back, get yourself a drink, get yourself a snack, and let's talk about five really, really creepy TikTok hauntings. To ease us into this, let's start off with the shortest and like the quickest TikTok haunting. This is from a user called May9292, and somebody actually tagged me in this haunting on Twitter. Now, the video starts off like pretty much any other video you have ever seen on TikTok. If you've been on it for like two minutes, you will recognize the music and the dancing and all of that. Obviously, I can't play any of that audio just so I'm not copyright claimed, but watch what happens here as the person in the video is going through their basically e-girl routine. Something begins tugging on her hair. She concludes by saying, my house does things like this. And unfortunately, at the time of filming at least, I could not find any further updates on her TikTok account. Still a very interesting entry and one I wanted to throw in here, although it is obviously super, super short. By the way, if you guys wanna follow me on TikTok, shameless self promo, my name is LoeybugXO on there and I post pretty unrelenting, cringy stuff. But I've also been having a ton of fun, so if you wanna follow me, then definitely do so. All right, with that quickie out of the way, let's dive into what I truly believe is going to kind of be like the meat of this video. This is an account that has been so widely recommended to me and sent to me so many times that I have this man's username written down in notebooks in my notepad on my iPhone. He is in like every video list that I have made in the last two months basically. And that is a user, and I do hope I am pronouncing this right, called Nick Semino 68 And I will just be referring to him as Nick from here on out. So Nick begins telling his audience about his haunting in a very, very interesting way and in a way that kind of grabs your attention uh, unlike anything you've ever seen before. He begins talking about how his home is haunted and then he notes that he found a tiny little door basically inside of a closet in his home. When he opened that little door, that little cupboard thing, he found a bag of patient ID cards. These patient ID cards were from Kings Park, which is an abandoned now psychiatric hospital in New York. And this is actually a place I have been aware of for a very, very, very long time. But as Nick begins digging deeper into what is potentially causing the haunting in his home, weird things begin to happen. I've laid all the cards out and we've been doing some research you can only see them well with the flashlight. These obviously are the easy ones to see. And it says like their department, their telephone number, all this, but these were crazy. You get the date, you get the doctor that prescribed it when they have to take it and what drug it was. So it says exactly who these people were, who their doctors were, when they should take their medicine and what their medicine was for. It's insane. Sorry if I'm talking really close to the microphone. This is mind blowing. They're like falling apart and dirty. Okay, so for the next video, I'm gonna gather their names, their addresses, who their doctors were. I'm gonna try to figure out if any of them are still alive. 
why these were hidden in my house. Maybe someone lived in my house that like was in the psych ward or something like that. I'm gonna research some of the buildings. I'll try to get answers. Cause, are you hitting me? No way. This is like an actual horror movie. <laughs> I literally think I just like summoned something. I don't want to be down here now. I'm I'm not gonna be that person who like walks into the noise. Okay, that creepy stuff on the wall was for me. I do photo photography. I'll link my Instagram. But <laughs> literally plugging my Instagram when a ghost like attacked. Sorry, I just cut I let go of the button, but <sighs> Okay, good. Good. Hey guys, I know I only have a minute, so I'm gonna be talking a little quick, but here's an update on what's going on. I know I've been gone for a while, it's been busy with work, school, and moving, but I did a bunch of research with a few friends. We had so much like on this piece of paper that we found out, but as we were doing research, the spirits started getting really upset with me. I seen a woman, my mother was seeing people in the hallways, my sister had weird experiences, and then stuff was falling off our shelves. Like this was nothing like we usually experience, and it was really terrifying. And I realized I was pissing off these spirits who were passed on who don't want to be researched. So I made a promise to them and myself that I'm going to stop the Kings Park research and I'm not going to disrespect them any longer. And I'm going to bury them somewhere nice because I don't want to bring them back to a place of where they were tortured. So I'm going to go and bring the files and give them a proper burial and I hope I can have a mutual respect for them. I did catch on camera some crazy stuff that happened at work that I'll show in the other parts. But that's the update on this. No more Kings Park research, no more disrespecting the dead. I'm going to let them be and I hope they let me be. And now, if you think that the haunting stops there, you are sorely, sorely mistaken, my dear viewer, because Nick actually begins to go on documenting the haunting of his workplace. Okay, I'm literally at work right now. I'm alone. That's my car. There is not one other car in the parking lot. Look, the freaking lights flickering from the reflection in the window. I don't know what's going on, I'm here alone, and this is what I deal with that I usually don't catch on camera. This is the light switch. Ready? This? I'm- Oh, I think I stopped it. Did I stop it? No, I didn't. I didn't stop it. I don't know what's going on, and this makes absolutely no sense. And now it stopped. Good. And ready? Here we go. Because that makes sense, right? This is what I deal with, and no one understands. And of course I'm here alone, and this is like a friggin' murder house. This is my security cameras, there's no one here, so I don't understand- Oh my god, Jesus Christ. Hello? Okay guys, we were literally just about to leave my store when sh started flickering again. This is the second time it's happened, my car's over there, and her keys are in the- Bad. We need to go home. We need to go get my keys. And the light turned on. I don't want to go. Okay, well, I'm going to literally record this whole thing just so you guys can see what happened. I'm literally I'm so, so scared. scared. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. Something. <laughs> <laughs> the bathroom light's on too. What the f wants to this light? Bro, why are my keys on the phone? Not there, like I did. I just put them on the desk. Like, oh my god. This, this is literally insane. Okay, guys, we've been sitting in the back for like 20 minutes now, and we're just watching the cameras, and stuff is still flickering and going on, but nothing happened back here. And we need to go home, and this is so freaking terrifying. We're 50 minutes past our shift because <laughs> of this. Sh it, we closed at 10, so we need to like. It's and it's so dark because all the light switches are over here. Stop it. Okay, this is what I mean. Oh this room is over. Oh god. This is. Oh my god. This is this is what we're dealing with. Oh my god, yeah. What the fuck? Are you? No wait, no, 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 no. No. <laughs> we literally looked away for like two seconds. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna peace out for the night. Okay, so we're gonna peace All out right, for the night. Good. This is I can't even put the key in. This is what we deal with at Twirls and Twirls, and no one believes us because <laughs> who would? Who really would? And the backlight's still on. No, the light's still on. Like, I don't think we turned it off though. But now the machine lights are on. 
good. This is, <laughs> this is great, this is great. Okay guys, I'm here alone. It's a few days later and it's six o'clock. I'll show you the time. The lights are freaking flickering again. The music was being, the music is being wacky. The speakers are in the ceiling. Like this is literally insane. And now they stopped and now they're, like this is what I mean, nothing, like <laughs> I don't know how to explain this. The, split, the switch is right here. Now watching over his TikToks, um, it's very clear that he is doing like live sessions on TikTok, like live streams that I am unfortunately missing out on. So I don't know how much information is in between all of this that I'm not catching, but essentially on top of having a haunted home, it's very clear that something very, very weird is going on at Nick's work. Um, and if this haunting is legitimate and if it's all real, I would stand to believe that it is following him all around. Hey, it's 11.29. Me and Nick were supposed to leave here at 11 o'clock, but weird f happening. A chair fell. There's lights Literally, flickering on the machines. Literally, there is lights flickering everywhere. A chair fell. This it's freaking like... me out. Tell me what the f*** is that? There's actual footsteps going on in the um, ceiling right now. And something just fell over over no. here. I'm Is anyone there? What the f all that noise was about? But there's nothing here. Nothing. Oh my god. I'm so f done. Oh my god, the f light is off. After watching those videos at his workplace, watch the final video that he had posted as of the time of filming this, anyways, back at his home. And the activity there is very similar to what he is experiencing at his workplace. Okay guys, my lights have been flicking for like two minutes. We heard a baby crying and now they won't stop. Two of the lights blew out. It's, what? I think I just seen the shutter. Where? Downstairs. Yo, I think I just literally seen the remote fall. The, oh my God. I don't know what to do. I don't want to even move from over here. This is insane. Did you catch it on camera? I don't know. Is anyone there? The TV's on. The blue light's on for the, okay, this is great. What is happening? Hello? Hello? The other lamp just went off down there. I just cut the video because something literally rolled out of the dark in front of me and my mom and I still haven't gone down there. So we're just staying in the flickering kitchen. This is an odd one because it's not like it's just happening at his work anymore. Um, that could have been faulty wiring or, um, you know, just someone playing pranks, but it's following him to his house where he claims nothing has been happening for quite a while. Um, I think it's very, very interesting and Nick is definitely one to watch. What I will say is regardless, looking at those patient ID cards gave me a very unsettling feeling. Um, and I believe that those are real if those truly came from his home if he really just found them in a cupboard like laying around basically I can understand the fear there and I can understand the like discomfort that came from finding those like this entire situation seems sketchy as crap basically so I believe in ghosts obviously so wholeheartedly um, I do see this kind of stuff all the time and especially from people who are trying to tell a story or um, kind of you know just 
entertain people with a narrative of, you know, a haunting or a ghost or something kind of spooky, but there's something about Nyx in particular, and maybe I'm naive for it, that really, really makes me so uncomfortable. I like to approach these things with a bit of a skeptical mind, or at least a bit of an inquisitive mind, um, as someone who can kind of see all sides and, you know, also remember that ghost activity is very hard to catch on camera and it does not happen all that often. But there is something about this one that has me tuning in for more all of the time. So highly, highly, highly recommend Nick's account. I think you guys will be pretty creeped out to say the least. Moving back into something a little bit more bite-sized, number three is another one of those entries that was sent to me in like the hundreds on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, everything. And I'm just gonna kind of let you view the video for yourself. The dogs are ready for bed. It's just a peaceful night here. I can't really go to bed myself. What the f is that? What? Oh God! I can't really go to bed myself. What the f is that? What? Oh God! F so pretty creepy, right? You clearly can see like a black figure in the hallway the dogs see it everyone sees it and then it just darts down and the video ends luckily this user had a bit of an update for us on this haunting we no longer live in that house we were actually going to buy it and that happened so we bought another house as far as here we haven't really had anything we do have a uh, wooden picture on our wall that keeps falling down, but we don't know what's causing it. Um, we haven't had anything weird happen like the shadow at the other house. So that's the story on the shadow house. I'm very, very glad to hear that this user and her wife are out of that home. Um, it seems very uncomfortable. The energy in there is Definitely, definitely weird. And if nothing else, whatever was there was very, very ballsy to show itself on camera like that. All right, moving into number four. And this one has been on my radar for quite some time now. It blurs that line between coming across as someone who is trying to talk about their real haunting, right on the line of that, and someone who's very clearly trying to tell a story. There's like this weird realm of um, people who I don't even think are actively trying to start an ARG, an alternate reality game, anything, but instead are just trying to write a work of fiction using social media. Um, but it, you know, the easiest way to classify it is an ARG, an alternate reality game. This is the blood tea story. Now, this person has also changed their username to II Bad Artist II. That's actually because this person, when they are not talking about their haunting actively, is talking about their artwork. And they are very clearly a super, super skilled artist. But this saga began when this user posted a video of her looking into the woods and asking if her viewers could see what she was seeing. So you guys can see that. I'm trying to find her. I just saw her in there somewhere. Oh, that's it, that's it. I think that's her right there. Can you guys see it? There's so I'm so scared to drive by. Can you see? Where is she? This is her right there. Oh, look, she's staring at me. She's so creepy. Where is she going? Where did she go? I love you guys, but I swear, some of you are either blind or having a healthy owl fetish. Here, in the in in the part two. You guys can see. Can't you see it? It's the... Here's the face. It looks... It looks weird. It looks deformed. Here's a hand right here. Wolfie, you want attention? <laughs> Look, shoulders. Right? And I think this is hair. Where do you guys see an owl or a puma or a tree? Now, I'm not 
gonna really lie to you. Even in her videos where she is like blatantly showing what she sees, I don't really see anything. I don't doubt that she obviously saw something. Um, it's just a little bit hard when you're on like, you know, a dinky little iPhone. After this point, our user actually tells us a bit of a story about what she's been experiencing. I drive up and down this road on a daily basis. My family lives down the road. For a while, for at least like a few days, I've been noticing, or you know you get that weird feeling like something is staring at you. And I kept on noticing something in the bushes, like almost looking at me. So at first I thought maybe it was like a person or a homeless person, but it just, it's a nagging feeling. It just didn't feel right. It just didn't feel like a normal person. Does that make sense? So finally I caught her on video and I've posted that part one, part two. The van that's on the road is right in front of me. Some of you guys mentioned it a few times that she might be living in there. I checked it out. It's actually the guy who lives in the house right there. That's his van. That's his workman. He's an electrician or something. I kind of asked him, trying not to be weird because it's kind of a weird question to ask somebody if, hey, does somebody live in your van, you know, or does your daughter look like a freaky creature you know what i mean but like he he said he hasn't seen anything and it's just his work van that's all so i don't think anyone actually lives in there so this is the garage and i have a really bad habit of leaving my car open and because i'm just running up and down you know to get something and i'm like running back up so when i came back i was locking the door and i was locking as i turn around i see like, I swear I see something sitting in my passenger seat. So that's why I took that video and then I just, I didn't even close the door yet. Then I just went back in and ran upstairs. And then me and my mom went to, back to look at the car and we didn't see anything. We looked in the garage and we just went around the neighbors talking to them. Like if they saw anything or to just watch out, if that makes sense. She also goes on to explain that she is talking to a psychic and, you know, she's really trying to get to the bottom of this mystery. But things slowly seem as though they are literally just dissolving into madness. So videos of our user seeing the entity in her mom's car in like their garage, um, having someone right outside of their door jiggling the doorknob and she very clearly takes the camera, looks outside and there is a person standing there doing this. So scary. To find a piece of paper crumpled up on the floor, um, but to the best of my knowledge, she never really talked about what was in it or anything like that. She hears things moving around in her attic and eventually actually explores it with her sister. Yesterday I was standing here changing like in my closet and I swear, like, I got this really, really bad feeling that something, like, was looking at me or, like, staring at me. And I was by myself in the house completely. And I look up, and I swear I saw something looking at me through this peephole or, like, this opening. I'm not sure what it is. Ah! Fuck. <laughs> I keep on missing it. Oh, my God. No one lives above us, it's just the, what is it called? The roof up there. I have my sister with me. And once I hear, I keep on hearing and seeing things coming from this. So um, I decide I'm gonna go up there. I have like a, where's that baton flashlight thing? Man, I'm not even tall enough and I'm 5'8". I'm not tall enough to get up here. We don't have a taller chair, huh? You can't even see. Can you see in there? Oh my god, that's f***ing scary. 
오! Yeah, pretty freaking creepy. So after scrolling through all of Alex's, you know, TikToks, I finally found one where she talks a bit about the haunting and it is just about as bizarre. You guys have been wanting an update on the whole ghost situation and basically, with um, I really don't know what's happening. I'm sorry. This one is a little bit more difficult because she is sitting in a way um, that if someone was standing right behind her and knocking the painting off the wall, she was definitely blocking them. But either way, it was super freaking creepy to watch. And I am very excited to see what you guys have to say about the Alex Huff haunting down below. Um, and also so curious if anything else will come of it or if she will elaborate any further. And there you are, my most beautiful loves. Those are my five super weird TikTok hauntings that I wanted to tell you all about. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks for sitting with me through this probably slightly awkward, rambly, maybe a little bit messy first video back in a while. It is just, it's kind of hard to get back into the saddle after taking some time off. Um, but I really always appreciate you guys' love and support, again, more than you'll ever know. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Happy Halloween. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.